Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about multiple projectiles and how units that have them can be really good in certain situations and really underwhelming in other situations. Multiple projectiles are very unique in Age of Empires 2 and they function in their own way, completely different than any other mechanic in the game. And units like Chukunu, maybe the Khmer Scorpion after the upgrade, Khmer Ballista Elephant after the upgrade, the Mine Skirmish after the upgrade, Kipchucks, those kind of units that fire multiple projectiles don't do the same damage on every shot. And it's very important to understand this. Now in general, multiple projectiles have their pros and cons, but overall I would say it's a very balanced concept and it works really good in certain situations and like I said in others, it can just be not as good as you might expect. The main idea behind the multiple projectile is that as a rule of thumb, the secondary projectiles only do one damage and so you're not always doubling the DPS by shooting an extra arrow. Let's take for example the Mayan Skirmisher after you get the unique tech Hulche Javelineers. Their first shot will deal 3 plus 4 damage, that's like in post imp how much damage an elite skirmisher will have, they'll deal 7 damage on a unit with 0 armor. Let's say you're going to be targeting a villager with 2 pierce armor, you'll actually deal 5 damage with that first shot, which is pretty substantial. Now if you get the tech, the secondary shot will not also deal another 5 damage, it'll deal 1 damage because the rule of thumb is that secondary projectiles always only deal 1 damage. Now in this case when you're targeting a villager, with the upgrade you'll do 6 damage without the upgrade you'll do five damage. It's not that big of a deal and it might help a little bit getting that extra DPS in there, but it's only an increase of like plus 20% damage and it's really not that crazy. It's still good, don't get me wrong, but it's not that crazy. Okay, but let's take another situation where you have the mine skirmisher with the upgrade and you have seven damage and you attack a bomber cannon. Now a bomber cannon has five pierce armor, so your, your skirmisher will be dealing two damage. That's not bad. Two damage means you need 40 skirmishers to one shot it. However, with the upgrade, you get that second projectile giving you an extra one damage and this ignores the fact that the unit has extra armor so you'll deal two damage with the first shot and you'll deal one damage with the second shot no matter how much armor your opponent has whether it's a building or a unit with infinite pierce armor it'll always do one damage and so you get the two plus one meaning three damage per volley of the hulche skirmishers this raises your dps by 50 percent putting you from two damage a shot to three damage of volley since it's two shots and that is a very significant increase in damage that way instead of needing 40 skirmishers to one hit a bomber cannon you need just 27 that is a pretty significant increase let's take another scenario into consideration and it's against the siege ram against the siege ram they have a ton of pierce armor so a skirmisher will do one damage yes seven attack minus the infinite siege ram armor so they'll do one damage which is you know still okay you can hit a ram 270 times and kill it i'm sure it's possible skirmisher might have some arm pain afterwards but definitely uh not impossible but after the upgrade instead of needing 270 uh, shots to kill a siege Ram, you need 135 because the first shot of the skirmisher without the upgrade will deal one damage with the upgrade you'll get a secondary shot that also deals one damage and in this case you are doubling the damage you do a 100 increase in the damage you do this is absolutely insane and this is where you notice just how strong the multiple projectiles can be and in my opinion this is the best use for it multiple projectiles do the best when up against units with high pierce armor or up against buildings this is because instead of dealing just one extra damage the one extra damage will will be very significant in those cases because it doubles your DPS. This makes it so if you have an army of 40 skirmishers, after you get the upgrade, you'll basically have what the equivalent of 80 skirmishers is on the field against those high pierce armor siege units. Obviously, you don't want to have skirmishers up against siege ramp in an ideal world, but in a lot of cases, we're just forced to play into very bad matchups or just very awkward situations. Take another very common example where you have a bunch of skirmishers and your opponent is running Hussars into your face. Hussar has six pierce armor, skirmishers has seven attack and it's one damage get the upgrade and now you're dealing double damage again so you can see against siege ram or against hussar you're getting the same effect where the upgrade will actually double your damage this is absolutely huge because once again the skirmisher is getting double its value after the upgrade against those high armor units Okay, let's move away from the skirmisher for a second and let's take a look at the Khmer Ballista Elephant and Heavy Scorpion situation. Of course, they could get their upgrade in Imperial Age to give them double shot, double crossbow, I think it's called. So you get two shots on their Heavy Scorpions and their Ballista Elephants. 
Now in this situation, the Scorpion will function in the exact same way the Skirmisher did. It does its full damage on the first shots and only one damage on its secondary shots. However, because it's a Scorpion, the secondary shots will still have the pass through damage that a Scorpion usually does. So how this one would work is that the Scorpion secondary shots will go through and deal the same pass through damage as the first shots, except it'll only do one damage to every unit it passes through. So in this case, you have one damage for the secondary shots, but you're dealing that one damage to every unit that that Scorpion volley will hit, which is actually quite significant because now instead of having just one damage on one unit, you have one damage on like five or six units, making a total of like five or six damage extra per volley. That's a very significant deal because if you have multiple Scorpions firing two shots at once, the secondary projectile of those multiple Scorpions, let's say five for instance, will be dealing one damage times five because there's five of them to four or five units. And you can see how this can quickly multiply and get you some really good value off that secondary shot. It is also worth noting that the first shot, the primary shot of the Scorpion will only do full damage to the first unit it hits. And after that, it'll do partial damage, half or even less to the units behind it, depending on how far the bolt travels. And so you're only getting the full impact on the first couple units. And after that, you get some like splash damage or some reduced damage, but it's still significant in its own way. And so having the second shot, it's going to be a very strong bonus to dealing more damage to those backline units, as usually they only take like a few damage from the first Scorpion shots. Getting that second shot dealing one extra damage in there is quite significant, especially when you mass them up. So in this case, the second projectile is actually quite strong and it's definitely worth picking up in late game scenarios if you want that extra splash damage to go along with your scorpions. The same is true for ballista elephants, it works the exact same way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Chukunu now and the Kipchuk, and I want to specifically compare them to their counterparts. Let's start with the Kipchuk. Now, the Kipchuk is basically just like a cavalry archer that fires multiple projectiles. A cavalry archer is pretty good. It's a high mobile, pretty high damage unit that can take out targets and move on to the next one. It has six base damage, plus two from Botic and Arrow, putting it at eight damage in total. The Kipchuk, however, has four damage and can go up to six damage after Botic and Arrow, but it fires multiple arrows. And so as you can see, against a single target, Target, the Kipchuk and the Cav Archer will feel very similar in damage output because the extra arrows from the Kipchuk will kind of make up for the two damages missing compared to the Cav Archer. However, where this really applies is against something like a Scorpion. A Scorpion has seven Pierce Armor and so a Cavalry Archer will deal only one damage. Eight minus seven is one damage. So one damage per shot for every Cav Archer volley, whereas a Kipchuk shooting its extra arrows against the Scorpion will deal one damage on its first shot, but then one damage on every shot afterwards. I believe the Kipchuk fires an extra two shots per volley. Could be wrong this it could be three but either way the kipchuk will deal an extra one damage per every extra arrow assuming it shoots an extra two arrows for a total of three the kipchuk will deal three damage per volley against the scorpion instead of the cab archer's one you can see once again how in a standard situation the kipchuk and the cab archer will perform very similarly but against a unit with high pierce armor the extra projectiles do so much more the same is true against siege ram a cab archer in late game will not do anything to a siege ram just one damage of volley the kipchuk will actually get all of its arrows dealing an extra damage and i believe the elite Kipchuk shoots an extra three arrows and so that would be one for its regular shots plus three for its extra shots for a total of four damage per volley against the siege ram and so in late game your Kipchuk will actually melt siege ram they'll be able to snipe trebuchets with relative ease they'll be able to snipe onagers and heavy scorpion with relative ease and it makes the unit a much more complete version of the cab archer in the late game multiple projectiles is amazing against units with high pierce armor once again we're seeing that trend Moving on to our last example, the Chikunu. Honestly, I'll do this one pretty quickly because it functions in the exact same way as a Kipchuk. The Chikunu can be compared to a crossbowman, where the Chikunu has much more damage and has extra projectiles associated to it. So Chikunu has eight damage raw. It can get up to eight plus two when you get Botkin arrow. And so it'll be dealing 10 damage base with the first shot and it'll fire an extra two shots that deal one damage similar to any other secondary projectile in the game. And so Chikunu targeting a knight, for example, the knight has, let's say, fully upgraded two plus two armor, so four pierce armor. Chikunu has 10 damage plus those extra two shots, it'll deal on its first shots, six damage. So the 10 minus the four pierce armor, six damage on its first shot, plus the extra two bolts, which is one each. So an extra two, six plus two is eight damage. A Chukunu with one volley will deal eight damage against a knight. Very simple math. The crossbow, on the other hand, only has seven attacks. So seven minus the four of the knight will deal three damage per shot. And so as you can see, the Chukunu has 
8 damage per volley versus 3 damage per volley of the crossbowman. In this case, you can see a clear bonus for the Chukunu in damage dealt against units. And this is double true against high pierce armor units, like against Seedram, for example. Crossbow does 1 damage. The Chukunu, especially the elite version that fires an extra shot, will deal 4 damage of volley against the Seedram. Once again, like the Kipchuk, letting you shred Siege. And it also gives you extra damage against buildings. Chukunu will deal, let's say, against a castle, deal 1 damage on its initial volley. But since it shoots multiple arrows, it'll do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Plus one. 4 damage of volley to the castle. The crossbow only does 1. Of course, you won't be targeting a castle with a Chukunu. But for example, if you're targeting a, you know, Archie Ranger house trying to break in, the Chukunu will have a much higher break-in rate than the crossbowman just because it does more damage to high fierce armor units and buildings alike. Overall, secondary projectiles are very balanced. They're not as good as you might think at first glance. They don't double your DPS in all scenarios, but as you can see, against high pierce armor units, you could actually double your DPS when you get the upgrades or when you have those units that have the built-in secondary projectiles. It's very important to know this, and I'm sure there's a lot of players out there that don't already know this, and it's definitely good to brush up on your Age of Empire knowledge, because next time you're in a situation where you're up against Chikunu, you don't necessarily want to go for the siege ram approach to try to push a Chinese player. You might instead want to go for some trebs and try to protect them instead of diving in deep and getting shredded by the Chukunu. Hope you guys learned something with this video. Let me know if I missed anything and thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you did enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!